Hello, welcome to the Healthy Alternatives podcast. I am Dr. Christine Sauer with DocChristine.com. Today's show is a recording of my radio show of the same name. Enjoy! Good afternoon, this is Dr. Christine Sauer, your host of the show Healthy Alternatives here on 97.5 CIOE FM with live stream on communityradio.ca every Thursday at 12 noon Atlantic Standard Time. Thanks for tuning in today. In this show, I will talk mostly with guests about all aspects of health, healthcare and wellness, from conventional to alternatives and everything in between. My mission for this radio show is to help change people's lives for the better by informing them about different options to get and stay healthy and well so they can choose for themselves which option might work in their case. And if you feel you're stuck in a dark place, I want to tell you, don't give up. There is a light at the end of the tunnel for you too. Today I'm extremely pleased pleased <laughs> to be with Charmaine Massey. Charmaine is a passionate motivational speaker and a certified life coach. She practices self-love and self-love and loves talking about self-love. Now that's a tongue twister for me. <laughs> Hi Charmaine, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you Christine for having me on the show. Really excited. I'm excited too. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you became the person you are today. So it all started with my journey, uh, you can say almost five, six years ago, where um, I the I hit my rock bottom. My rock bottom was my divorce. Mm -hmm. And that changed my entire life into a whole new um, experience that I'd never had before. Now, keep in mind that I got married at the age of 27. So for 20, and I got divorced when I was 29. So it was a very short period, but it was a painful period. Mm -hmm. And that shaped my reality completely. And so for the 20 plus, well, um, I can say 30 years, I was living uh, a life uh, that had no excitement, that had no passion, that had uh, no clarity. Mm -hmm. I was very clouded in a very dark place. And then... When I came out of it, and literally I could say in the last two years, my experiences have been absolutely phenomenal. And all because I started to love myself more, mm -hmm. I started to gain clarity, and I was more focused on what I wanted to go, go for, which is set my goals and just go at it. That sounds really exciting. Now, tell me a little bit how did you feel when you were in that marriage, maybe an abusive uh, marriage or... How how did you end up getting married to a man that really wasn't the man that you would stay with for the rest of your life? I'm an East Indian, and in our culture, uh, arranged marriages are common. Oh, yes. Um, now, I cannot say that somebody like my family forced me. No, absolutely not. This is something, because it's a norm, I just went with the norm, mm -hmm. thinking that this is normal. You know, I'll, you know, my parents obviously are going to choose the, the right, the best person for me. And it turned out to be that it wasn't the case. Uh, when this arranged marriage happened, I went ahead with it. But I could already see signs of this becoming a big disaster in my life. How did you, the, what, what, what were the signs? I, I, like, I like to get the story. <laughs> absolutely. And, and the signs were um, him being very controlling on mm -hmm. the man. Mm -hmm. You know, that was always something that I always got to hear from him on the man. You don't tell me what to do. Um, he had this attitude of uh, uh, of just being uh, not, not working at all. He did not want to ever work. And he wanted to just stay with my parents in their basement because you have to keep in mind he was from England. And he came here. So I basically bought him here uh, to live with me. He did not want to work. He Every time I made his resume, very soon I'll be making his resignation uh, because something always was wrong with some jobs. Nothing was ever wrong with him. Everything mm -hmm. was wrong with his job. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well, this is not working out. I don't want to live in my basement, my parents' basement. I want us to get out of here. But on my income alone, that is not going to work. Uh, he would disrespect my parents living in their house. Wow. He what, would, what, what did you do to work at this time? I actually, and that's the problem. That's why I call myself in a dark place. I had no clarity. I wasn't mm. able to do anything. 
other than literally fight with him every single day, cry myself, yes. my blood pressure was going high. Every mm-hmm. time I confronted him about disrespecting my parents, he'd say, I got married to you, not your family. And I was like, you know what? Then in that case, you leave this place right away because this is my family's house. This is my parents' house. And uh, but but it's like it's something that's were just not changing. And then one day, I took a step and I told my parents, I can't do this anymore. We need to end this ASAP. Mm-hmm. And that's when they supported me in this decision, given that it was an arranged marriage. The family got involved to bring us together, and this time the family got involved to bring us out of it. But I had to make that decision. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when I how, finally how did, did that decision feel? How did you get to make that decision? What was the last? trigger that actually so, got you to say you know, that's it now you know what he actually got a car behind my back and uh, i didn't know anything about it hmm. next thing you know this car is standing in front of me i'm paying for its insurance and the monthly payment hmm. and i didn't know anything about it this is just me making or the only person earning between the two of us wow. then he got in an accident and i ended up my insurance ended up getting high because of that mm-hmm. I'm paying for our phone bills. I'm basically taking care of major expenses and I'm getting no help whatsoever. So be- he, he ruined you say- financially and he didn't financially care about it. Ruined. No, and to him, it, it wasn't a big He only lived for today. For him, yeah. life was just getting by and he was okay with that. I had bigger dreams. Good. And we couldn't even sit in the same room together. We had, within two months of us being together, we had two separate beds. We wow. wouldn't even be around each other. There was so much negative energy amongst yeah. us. It, it could not, yes. So it was, it was bound to fail. Yeah, did you ever end up having any children? Thank goodness, no. Ah, uh, that <laughs> was a godsend remember, in this case. <laughs> because I remember him making a comment. One time I said, you know what, you're really stressing me out. And he said, oh, I'm stressing you out. You wait till we have kids. They'll stress you out even more. Oh, wow. <laughs> what did you think of that? <laughs> I, at that time, obviously, it wasn't funny. I'm laughing now, but I'm just like, oh, really? So it just seems like he got married to me just to make, to ruin my life, to just make me feel more miserable. Like, he was somebody who got the worst out of me. I, yeah. I did not see... There were there were things that I would say and do sometimes, Christine, that even I was shocked. I'm like, I wasn't sure I was capable of being this nasty, but this guy was getting that out of me. He pushed all the right buttons. Oh, well, let me tell you that, yeah. <laughs> so what was the last trigger? What really pulled the trigger and said, I, I have to throw him out of the house? It was a buildup of everything. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was. It came to a point where I was just like, "Those one night I sat on my bed praying, but I cannot continue this anymore." Because every night I went to bed mm-hmm. crying. I developed high blood yes. pressure because of him. I'm like, "This is this cannot continue." And the thing is, it already had started a long time ago. It yeah. was just a matter of me coming to that decision. It sounds and a little was, bit like you felt trapped for a while, and oh, my goodness! Mm-hmm. You know what? The thing is, we we got married in twenty. 20- 10 mm-hmm. and then he went away for a year to uk until his immigration paperwork and everything got started mm-hmm. he joined me a year after and honestly when he joined me in canada uh within two months our beds were separate and we could only survive for seven months seven months yeah. too that's me stretching it because wow. there was always that hope it's like i want to keep trying maybe i'll try a different way of doing things you know mm-hmm. just one time i remember telling him um, let's, you know, get some help, you know, we can get some marriage counseling. And he said, I don't need counseling, you do. And oh, I was like, wow. when did marriage become a one person thing? So Where did you try to change him? Or? I, I think he thought that I was trying to change him, but I was oh. only working towards having a better marriage, a better mm-hmm. relationship with him. Um, and, and it didn't help that it was, I was constantly getting pushed back. And he didn't have no interest in it. He was happy the way it was, and he just wanted to push you down in a way. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and I I don't know how can somebody be happy in such a miserable state, but apparently he was. Really? Do you do you feel he was happy now, looking at it from his point of life, or is it just something that he just accepted? But, you know, yes, you can say he wasn't happy. He, he did accept. But, I mean, at one point, too, you do realize that this is not something that you want to continue. That right. one time you'd break and come to your wife and say, okay, I think we need to fix things. How can we do things better? Right, right. He didn't have that capacity. In mm. him. So he really was a toxic person in your life. 
very, very. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm in a way glad that it happened to me. Because if it wasn't for that experience in my life, I wouldn't have hit my rock bottom and mm-hmm. realized what am I doing with my life? Because honestly, when this marriage got over, I thought I was nowhere. I looked at myself in the mirror and I saw a loser. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I said, okay, Shar, what exactly is identity? Because my identity was just around him. So, like, so when it married, ended, did he, did your parents force him to move out or did he move out by himself? How did it work? The way it worked is uh, I mean, like an arranged marriage concept. Mm. So we got uh, his family involved in this conversation mm-hmm. too, where my parents and I were sitting and his uh, family, his fa- his parents and family are in England but we had his uncle show up here Mm -hmm. and my dad said you know what the kids are not getting along maybe it's a good idea to have them separately live for some time to really understand is this what they want to continue with not Mm -hmm. not divorce but just a little separation would help he took that as an indication of you know you're kicking me out that's it I'm done I am out of here Mm -hmm. within a week of us being separated but I'm hoping that you know things will get better and maybe he'll think start thinking differently he called me and said I want to meet you at a coffee shop I'm done with you I want a divorce oh good okay yeah (laughs) so he came to that decision I said you know what I'm destined to do better than this so yes absolutely and you I mean it was still not easy yeah, I, no, I, no, I, I mean, I mean, a divorce but... is one of the major stresses in your life, but uh, an unhappy marriage is too. So you had a, you had quite some stress there. <laughs> but and like I said, you know what? Now that I look back in time, it mm. only made me stronger and wiser. So I'm in a way glad it happened. That's wonderful, and and we all learn from those experiences, and it is a wonderful thing that it actually happens because we learn so much from it. And I'm glad you did because some people never learn. And it's really amazing. And in the second half of the show, we'll talk a little bit more about what you learned and what you're doing today and yeah. how you're helping others overcome similar situation and love themselves more, which we all need to do because how can we help others when we don't love ourselves? Absolutely. Very true. Anna, that is wonderful, Charmaine, and I'm excited about talking to you some more. And this brings us to the end of the first half of today's broadcast here on 97.5 CIOE FM Community Radio. Please tune in after the commercial break for more about loving yourself with Charmaine Massey. Hello and welcome back to Healthy Alternatives here on 97.5 CIOE FM or on the web at communityradio.ca. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Sauer, and today I'm talking with Charmaine Massey. She's a life coach and an amazing young lady (laughs) compared with Mm me. In the first half, we talked a little bit about her story in an arranged marriage that ended, and now... She learned something from it. And Charmaine, tell us a little bit what you learned and what you're doing now and what you're passionate about. What I learned, Christine, is I didn't love myself enough. As a result, I was I attracted that failed marriage. I attracted that that toxic individual in my life, which I did not know anything about energy, universe, attracting these things. I didn't know anything about that. But it wasn't until I, I literally hit my hit myself in like the head and I was like, what is going on here? And I learned that because I did not love myself enough that I I allowed him to talk, to treat me badly. Mm. You know, because and, and and that is a fact. It's like until and you feel you're worthy of great things, you will unfortunately allow all the bad things to come to you. That's right. And, you you uh, teach others to treat yourself. And if you don't love yourself, they treat you like a doormat and walk on you. 
very true and mm-hmm. and i felt that it was it this was the oh this was quite an experience and that's why i kept saying in the past in my previous uh just before our break here that i'm glad this happened that mm-hmm. i'm glad this made me feel this made me really understand and look at myself like no you are important too i looked at myself in the mirror and said that to myself you know another thing that i learned is um uh when i was not clear also about my life um that's also when i attracted this marriage mm-hmm. so then what i simply did from that on from that point is i learned that i need to love myself more i need to set goals for myself and not settle for less and that's not being selfish that's a necessity for your life that's right because of- how can we love others if we can't love ourselves very true very true and it's like when you even you know and you realize you're amazing and you're worthy you attract all the amazing things in your life and isn't that what we want we want abundance we want happiness we want financial freedom we want success how can that happen when you yourself don't think you're worthy of it some people just settle for oh you know what i've accepted my life to be miserable no that's not true that's right you, and we can change our have- fate Exactly you just have to take charge of your life and but the problem is also to see that change change is a big big factor that people don't like because it makes you uncomfortable it makes you come out of your comfort zone and people don't like that I know and it's it's it's, it's funny there's that old saying that they always say uh, uh, two things in life are sure death and taxes and I always say that's not true because mm-hmm. taxes are not sure you can go to jail and avoid taxes but Absolutely. there is two things that are sure and as you said it's death of course we can't avoid that but the other one is change we can't avoid it mm-hmm. why be afraid of it and I love what you said we have to learn to accept and embrace change Well, and the thing is also, you know, the world around us is changing as well. Mm-hmm. We have to evolve and learn and grow and change. And then, but the thing is, if if unless you do that, you're going to be left behind. And then you compare yourself with other family and friends who are growing and are doing very well in life. Well, they decided to get uncomfortable. Okay, while you decided to stay in your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you: How did you learn to love yourself? Because many people might ask, well. I can tell myself I love myself more but that doesn't make me feel that way. So how do you change from the wanting to love yourself to actually being able to do so? I that was a mindset change which took me some time to get into that level because I was always taught to live for others and not for yourself. That's unfortunately my the that was the when they're bringing from what I've seen. Um and then I started to do things for myself like like little things it started off with the little things like let's just go for your manicure pedicure you know without any any event or reason just mm-hmm. go and do it treat yourself better right um just go for a massage let's take a trip just just out of nowhere just be more spontaneous for myself things that made me happy rather than worrying about am is somebody else happy rather than pleasing others very true and i stopped doing that that's so important and i i love what you say so do little things that you really want to do and just go ahead and do them do it and and you know what that the overthinking is what will kill it the most cuz the more we overthink oh no you know i don't have maybe i'll do it tomorrow the more procrastination and overthinking comes in the more you're not going to do it that is so, so the true the best thing is the minute that that thing strikes okay i want to go get myself an ice cream you go get yourself an ice cream don't make excuses <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Don't make excuses. I think that is so true that you say don't make excuses because the excuses won't last. No, they no. won't help you. And then you, you sit back and like, oh, I wish. You know mm-hmm. what, honey? You can wish all you want now. Time once gone doesn't come back. So and I, I it is so true. true. And 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 I volunteered at a. Uh, at a hospital in a palliative care station, I talked to dying people a lot, and they said. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nobody said I wished I worked more or I wished I pleased others more. They said I wished I take more risks. I did what I really wanted to yeah. do in life. Yeah. I I wished I loved more, spent more time with my family and that's more or less what they have when when they regret it. Some people say oh I had a good life, I'm ready. But many people had some regrets and say I really wanted to do this and I didn't do it because I thought I didn't have the money and now I'm dying and I still didn't do it. Very very true and you know what and then that's 
I'm glad you said that because something similar that I've, I've also mentioned mm-hmm. in my book, which I'll talk about later, mm. that uh, the time is precious. It is so important that we, we live in the moment rather than worrying about what happened in the past or what will happen in the future. Let's make our present better. It's a gift. It's a present, right? You people right. say that. It's a present. It's a present. And that's the only time we have is now. Now tell me a little bit about your book. So this book is... Um, it's very closely related to our everyday life. Um, because What's it called? Other than that, it's, uh, it was called Truly Living or mm-hmm. Just Surviving. And basically, I, I, I know I was like that too, where I was living a robotic life mm-hmm. of just get, doing the same routine every single day, but expecting, the same, the, uh, expecting different results. And it doesn't work that way because, I mean, if your approach every day to certain things is the same, you cannot get different results. You're going to get the same results. Mm-hmm. And I, I, when I have looked back in my past to what I am now, I basically wanted to create a tool for everybody, like a step-by-step action plan for mm-hmm. them to see how um, that can enhance or set up a really good foundation for them to uh, attract more abundance, more happiness, mm-hmm. more peace of mind. And uh, and I, I basically talk about very simple everyday things we do without thinking. But now you have to actually pay more attention, like everyday clarity. You know, oftentimes when we feel clouded, and we have we don't know that clarity is even something out there that needs to get addressed. But it is. Yes. Until you have clarity, how can you move forward? Very true. Very true. You need to know. Right? You need to be clear about what you want in life. Exactly. Second one, like there's eight chapters and I've just, I'll just name a few. So clarity is certainly one of them. Uh, focused is another one. Mm-hmm. When we're not focused, you have this goal to reach. If you're not focused, how do you get there? That's so true. these are just, again, everyday little things that we take for granted and don't really pay much attention. But this is literally what's, uh, what's, the, what's creating the quality of your life too. And it can take a while to actually find a focus that you can really focusing on and be passionate about. Very true. And you know, basically in this book, all I'm talking about is simple, like simplistic words every single day uh, thing, which is we will always be a work in progress. For the entire, for up until anything, we will always have something to work on or work towards. Mm, that is so important. And I certainly will share the links that you gave me. Uh, how can my listeners, if they listen to that and want to contact you, what's the best way to contact you? I am a Facebook fanatic, so you can certainly <laughs> get them to get on my Facebook and, and uh, send me a message or add me as a friend. And you know what? You, it's so I just simply like, love making friends. You know, if you just want to simply just say hi and chit chat, I am more than happy and willing to do that. I have my own YouTube channel where I passionately uh, talk about my self love uh, videos, so some very short videos. Um, so certainly you can uh, check me out on, on YouTube as well. Um, and my book is, of course, on Amazon. So you can certainly. Uh, what was get it into called her. again? So, truly Living or Just surviving yes i am for truly living all day <laughs> now charmaine do me a favor for my listeners spell your name so they can actually find you you know there's so many people on facebook <laughs> of course absolutely so it's Charmin. actually on facebook i'm a char and i prefer being called char it's s-h-a-r and my last name is massey m-a-s-s E-Y. Now that is really wonderful, Char. Char, should I call you Char? Char, Char. It sounds a little bit like Char to me, but it's just Char. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you're know, not Char. You're, you're alive. You're burning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was happening is when I when I uh, when I came to Canada and my name Charmin came up. Apparently, there's Charmin tissues out there, you know, and I. <laughs> I, I didn't like that. I'm like, okay, Yeah, but they're I mean, spelled differently. That's mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to change this, and it's going to be sharp. From okay, I hear you. Well, it's a wonderful message, and I thank you so much for being on my show today, Charmin, Charmin Char, whatever. Char- and yeah. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine.
Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. And this brings me to the end of today's show. And please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions, thoughts, comments, or suggestions. Or if you'd like to contact Char and forget how to contact her, my email here is christine at communityradio.ca or contact me through my website, docchristine.com. I'm always grateful for any feedback. I also want to extend a special thank you to today's producer, Jim Francis. Thanks, Jim. You might not know this, but this is a volunteer-run non-profit radio station. And we even have an art gallery. Thank you all for listening to Healthy Alternatives. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Sauer. Tune in next Thursday at noon on 97.5 CIOE FM Community Radio with live stream on communityradio.ca for the next episode. Goodbye and have a great day.